Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about induction cooktops, which are another use of eddy currents, which we've been studying. So induction cooktops, as we can imagine, are a way of uh, cooking food that use eddy currents in order to produce heat. Now, eddy currents convert electrical energy into heat energy, right? So we can use the heat energy to cook food. This is the idea behind the induction cooktop, which looks something like what we can see on the left. This device utilizes eddy currents to create heat energy that can uh, cook food. But because it uses uh, eddy currents, all it needs to do is produce a changing magnetic field. So the cooktop itself doesn't actually get hot. Only the metal container that holds the food uh, becomes hot enough to cook the food. So an induction cooktop consists of at least one conducting coil, which might look something like this, beneath an insulating surface, usually made of a ceramic material or of glass. So when the induction cooktop is turned on, a high frequency oscillating current is run through the coils. So high frequency means that it oscillates back and forth very many times every second, right? So that means we get a changing magnetic field. In fact, the magnetic field will oscillate with exactly the same frequency as the current that's producing it. So if the current oscillates back and forth 200 times a second, the magnetic field will oscillate up and down 200 times a second. So in a metal pan, like in the diagram, is placed on top of the cooktop, then we get eddy currents appearing inside the pan. Right? There's a quickly changing magnetic field going through the pan, and so little eddy currents are produced pointing uh, in one direction and then back in order to resist this changing magnetic field. So the eddy currents within the pan will heat it up, because of course they convert it into heat very quickly. And this means that the pan will quickly get hot enough to be able to cook its contents. So the cooktop itself, which is this uh, ceramic or glass layer, doesn't heat up. Only the metal on top of it does. So as you can imagine, this has a number of advantages compared to more conventional stoves. Induction cooktops have a number of advantages. Uh, if we look at another stove, it will use things like red hot surfaces if it's an electric stove, or uh, it'll use flames if it's perhaps a gas stove. And in both cases, these flames or this red hot surface will be what heats the cooking vessel, whether it's a pan or a saucepan or a, that sort of thing. So this will result in a lot of energy lost in the environment. Right? The, uh, a red hot stove will be radiating out red hot energy whether or not there's a saucepan on top of it. It'll even radiate it out to the air when there is a saucepan on top. Same deal goes for flames. Not all of the energy of the flame is going into cooking the food. Induction cooktops only heat the cooking vessel. They don't heat up the outside environment at all, unless of course there's a big iron object that happens to be very close to the induction cooktop. This means that they're more energy efficient than other stoves. All of the energy that they draw goes straight into heating up the cooking vessel. And it also allows them to cook food more quickly because they, the cooking vessel heats up more quickly. There's more energy being directed at it. Another advantage is, of course, that the cooktop itself doesn't heat up. This makes it harder for people to accidentally burn themselves. Only the cooking vessel can burn the user. So it is still possible to burn yourself, but not by touching the induction cooktop itself. The induction cooktop does not heat up even when it is in operation. Remember that the cooktop is made out of a ceramic material or out of glass. Neither of these materials are very good at conducting heat. That means that even though the frying pan or the saucepan or whatever will heat up to very hot temperatures, the heat will not easily spread to the other parts of the induction cooktop. If you were to put your hand 
directly underneath where a frying pan was a moment before, it may still be hot, but only because the frying pan on top of it was hot. The cooktop itself does not heat up. Induction cooktops do have limitations. We can't use them uh, to do everything in the same way as a normal stove or a normal oven. So not all conductors can be used as cooking vessels for the cooktop. Ideally we want, we want to use something like iron because iron is the most permeable to magnetic fields and will produce uh, more eddy currents. The metal has to have a strong response to magnetic fields and it must have a relatively high resistivity. If it has a very very low resistivity then we'll get very large amounts of eddy currents and those may make the metal hot enough that it can melt. So the ideal cooking vessels for the cooktop are vessels made of iron or steel. Of course steel is a compound of iron. The low resistance of copper or aluminium vessels makes them unsuitable for use. So cooktops can damage vessels if they're made of the wrong sort of metal. You have to, be al you have to always be careful about what exactly you're putting onto the stove. Alright, so now that we've finished the theory of induction cooktops, which cook food through eddy currents, we can go on to some questions. Question 11. On which material does a cooking vessel rest when it is placed on an induction cooktop? That is, what is the top of a cooktop made of? Is it copper coils, a ceramic insulator, plastic, or iron or steel? Now iron or steel, this is the cooking vessel, right? This is what heats up when a changing magnetic field goes through it. If we were to make the cooktop out of that, then the cooktop would steal all the energy in the magnetic fields and we wouldn't be able to heat up the cooking vessel directly. Copper coils are placed underneath the surface of the cooktop so they're not able to uh, come into direct contact with the cooking vessel. If we used plastic then it would be liable to melt when the thing on top of it heated up and as I mentioned before we can't use iron or steel. So the correct answer is a ceramic insulator and this is the correct answer. So this will not be heated by the induction coil because it's not a conductive material and it won't heat up as the object on top of it heats up either because it's a poor conductor of heat. Question 12. Which of these correctly describes induction cooktops when compared to conventional stoves? Are they more dangerous, less energy efficient, cannot heat all pans, or take longer to cook food? Let's go through these options, shall we? First of all, they're not more dangerous. They don't get hot like conventional stoves, so they are in fact safer than regular stoves. They are not less energy efficient because all of the energy that goes into the induction cooktop is used to heat up the cooking vessel. There's no energy lost to the environment. And because of this, they don't take longer to cook food either. In fact, they can cook food more quickly than conventional stoves, if we put enough power into them, of course. So our last option is C, they cannot heat all pans, and this is the correct answer. Induction cooktops work best with iron or steel. Uh, if we put something like copper or aluminium onto the induction stove, then we can damage the metal, and if we put something like a glass casserole dish onto the induction stove, it won't heat up at all, because it's not conductive. Question 13. Can a chef burn themselves when they are using an induction cooktop to cook food? Explain why or why not. So at first we might think, no, they can't. Why not? Because the heat uh, that's underneath the cooking vessel will not spread to the rest of the induction cooktop. And even if the chef were to put their hand on top of the induction cooktop, it would not be hot, so they would not be burned. But here's the thing. The cooking vessel does get hot. So yes, the chef can burn themselves. The reason is because even though an induction cooktop heats metal without getting hot, the metal is hot enough to burn. Question 14. Explain why a glass casserole tray cannot be used on an induction cooktop. 
Now, I mentioned this before. Can you remember why? Well, induction cooktops work by inducing eddy currents in cooking vessels, and the eddy currents will heat them up. Right? If we have a glass casserole dish, that can't have eddy currents because it's not conductive. So glass is an insulator that cannot sustain eddy currents. Part B, suggest a way that the energy of the cooktop could be used to heat the glass tray. So obviously, we can't simply make eddy currents appear within the tray. If we still want heat, we need the eddy currents to appear within something else, right? And then we can use that something else to heat the glass. So the best option, I suppose, would be a sort of plate made of iron or steel. So placing an iron plate on the cooktop will create a hot surface, the iron plate itself, on which to put the tray. And once it's there, the heat of the iron plate will be able to cook the contents of the glass dish. Question 15. Explain how an induction cooktop can cook food without becoming hot, like other stoves do. That's what the whole section has been about, really, isn't it? All right, so how do we answer this? Well, let's start with this. The induction cooktop uses a fluctuating magnetic field to induce eddy currents in iron or steel cooking vessels, right? So the uh, eddy currents, of course, create a magnetic field that opposes the field that creates them. This is according to Lenz's law. So the eddy currents are transformed into heat because the metal has resistance. And this means that uh, the vessel made of metal gets hot and it will be able to cook the food it contains because it is hot, just like all cooking vessels on all stoves. All right, so that's the end of the questions, which means we're uh, at the end of our section about induction cooktops. So induction cooktops are devices that use the energy from changing magnetic fields uh, to produce heat energy in a cooking vessel and cook food. In the next section, we'll be learning about how we can use eddy currents to detect hidden metal.